How you doing? And welcome back to Undertaker 365. I'm Jacob Vandenberg. I'm a licensed funeral director and I'm the host of the series. Uh, the purpose of this video right now is to disclose to you um, uh, some information that is a disclaimer um, about what our series is and what you can expect moving forward. Um, understanding that we're, we're talking about the funeral industry, um, there's some extremely sensitive topics that we're going to be covering, and I want you as the viewer to understand that the information I'm disclosing to you is strictly informational. Um, this is my opinion. Um, the opinions that we express are solely coming from Undertaker 365 and me, Jacob Vandenberg, and certainly our field experts that we're interviewing. So with that, I encourage you to read our viewer um, uh, disclaimer, understand that this is a uh, viewer discretion and that uh, we are covering a lot of sensitive topics, but really we want to be transparent about it and make sure, make sure that you understand that uh, we're providing information based upon our opinions. So thank you very much. Welcome back to Undertaker 365. I'm your host, Jacob Vandenberg. In today's episode, this is episode six of our second installment of our reality series on Undertaker 365, starring the Vandenberg family and the staff at the funeral home. Uh, today, the viewer is going to be seeing two key areas um, in our reality show. Um, one being the final phase of a six month long remodel project of the Tinley Park Funeral Home. Um, you're gonna notice the interaction that the Vandenberg family has with the individuals that are remodeling the facility. Um, this is a, a key and critical area that I believe is important for you to understand is that the Vandenberg family is consistently trying to beautify and modernize the facilities that they um, host funeral services in so that the customers and the guests that come through the doors feel comfortable and that they're a part of a, a, a healthy and, and safe environment. Um, the episode will shift gears when the phone rings at the funeral home and the directors are called out um, to do a removal um, at a local nursing facility for a family that called upon their services. Um, this is an interesting step because the because of the world pandemic and everything that's going on, um, you're going to notice that it's the first time that uh, Jacob Vandenberg, in this case, uh, had to do something. So uh, really uh, it'd be interesting to see if uh, the, the viewers pick up on that during the episode. I hope that you're enjoying it. I hope you're staying safe and healthy, and uh, we'll see you very soon. Enjoy. and they were like trying to strip it. Not, not a perfect split, which I guess it doesn't matter. They can get new ones in there and put it on that side because that's the side it's going on. It's open up. But they picked them up like it was nothing. Center of it or something on the granite, we can dump it in there, get 
in a dormant. Too much. Too much. But I'm, that way it's kind of enclosed and you don't have to worry about cleanness of that thing. Because look at that thing. It's stainless steel. Oh, I don't like that. Oh, I see what you're saying. What? You said that that... You still put coffee, you still put sugar and cream and stuff in coffee, Josh. Yeah. You still use starters and coffee. Okay. There's no reason to have an attitude. We're talking here. <laughs> Are you serious right now? Yeah. Well, I, I don't know if I like that. Shut up. Just a little I'm not a carpenter. Clearly. Yeah, clearly. Uh, clearly. If you put the garbage can here. That's the length of the table. Huh? That's a, that's a length of a small. Dude, yesterday there was big table over here and two small tables over there. I mean, yeah, there was a lot of food in here, but still. We'll see what Dad says. See what he says, and then, uh. We'll just do whatever you want to do. Just... This is true. Here, stop looking at that. Dad, we just had a football fight. No. Yep. Got the OCD kicked in this morning, huh? Yeah, a little bit. It's all cleaned up. Looks good, huh? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Let him, uh, let him go up there and I was, uh, uh, let him go up there and show you how he's a big carpenter now. He, he's, you gotta frame this in here, and you gotta you yeah, gotta box it in. Two ways to do it, thanks. Jake's way. Your way, the right way. Yeah. Okay. Bottle's gonna be here in ten minutes. Jake, you better figure this out now. What he's got going in his mind doesn't make any sense. What do you mean? So I was just getting inspired to ask that question. Damn, there because. I understand. What do you want to do here? How, how do you want to lay this out? What do you mean? We don't, we don't gain a lot of counter space. We gain a small little table that we have up here, you know? I thought the idea of it all was to kind of gain a little bit more, and then we thought that it was probably going to come down to like right here, you know? Mm -hmm. So we're kind of short something here now. So what do we do? Uh, the garbage can's going to go there. Right? Yeah. So the countertop. So then you're telling me, you're telling me the countertop's coming from here, right, all the way over, and we're gonna end it like right here on this tile, right. So now the garbage can would just go back. So yeah, then you have the garbage can would be recessed underneath. Okay. So you're telling me that you wouldn't want to bring this thing down here, move this one to here, and then put the garbage can right here, right? You would just kind of look kind of goofy. Yeah, I don't like that. You went on the end, right? Yeah. Why, why does the garbage can need to be there? Go ask your son. That Why, is that what he said? Yeah. No, I think it should be here. Right. Just for access alone, when, when we have a wake going on, and we need to empty the garbage, yeah, sure. there's going to be people in front of the coffee pot, there's going to be people in front of the refrigerator, there's not going to be anybody here. Right. He had a point about the coffee. I said, you gotta take your coffee and cream and you come down over here and you put it in here and throw your, your trash in the garbage can there. You know? But I also said you can have a little small garbage can there. Yeah. A small one where somebody's not gonna come over here with a plate right. and throw a plate in there. That's, that's right. You go to that one. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, coffee only. There's gonna be more garbage here and stuff to throw out because this is where the food stuff's gonna be. You're gaining counter space no matter what. If the coffee pot, I don't put the coffee pot in the middle, behind the sink, it doesn't matter, but it was about trying to gain counter space. Right, so we can't edit here. But I also did say that too. I said, well, maybe. Where's the door for the other one? Oh, uh, that's kind of an issue. So. What do you mean it's an issue? It's right here. It, what, it won't open? No. Because of the. The, the, the guys got here at 6 o'clock last night. So okay. they had a bad day. They were behind. Okay. Blah 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 blah. Okay. They come in here, and I said to them, "I go, hey, you guys got to make sure that you they're going together." He's like, "Yeah, I, I got you." And I know you talked about. So he started to take this thing off, and didn't have the right tool. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> got to have the right tool. So um, they're supposed to be here today. 
sometime this morning. So that's it. Okay. You can do it this, right? No chair? <laughs> and I think no chairs. I don't think you throw anything right here. It's just we'll bring it your sandwich. I'm fine with it. I think that's about you the more stuff you throw in here, it's gonna be smaller and smaller. I agree. Do it now. It'll be on the back burner and then do it. I'll tell you. That way it's all done. Brad, you like spending his money? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Place looks pretty clean, huh? Looks very nice. Yeah, it's here at 7 30. OCD. Couldn't sleep last night. From here to here, we talked about doing two pieces, right? And you were going to put the seam uh, right here? Yeah, wherever you have to. Mm -hmm. See, then we're going to have the coffee pot's going to be over that seam, so I kind of like that better. There's no weight there enough. This is it. Did you put a new cabinet here or what? We moved that one. There was a half one here. Yeah. So we took this full one from here, where the dishwasher is, put it there. I'm gonna bring a piece of paper. Back to the paper. Hey, can, can I bring my truck all the way? Yeah, pull right up to the front door, sir, bro. Thank you. It's one of those days, Dad. I can see that. It's one of those days I'm gonna need to skin it. Nine o'clock in the morning. I can see that. I'll be out by noon. Just like yesterday. Just like yesterday. <laughs> Not me. I work till 5 o'clock every day. Yesterday was 6.30. Overtime. You get overtime for that. Yeah. Overtime. Overtime. All while Jake's at home. Cuddle up on his couch. I'm over here slaving away. Jake, here. I'm he was starving. Right. I was in the field position yesterday. I'm starving. My stomach's going crazy. Sure. Steak and shit. Did you call the flooring company? Yes. What they yeah. say? I didn't call them. I emailed them. That's the best way to get a hold of them. I'm gonna take this fridge, put it in the garage. Don't put it on your back. We can do that. I, yeah, I basically <laughs> just did that, didn't I? Yeah, twice. Did you jump on my back? back? <laughs> you hear this? <laughs> you hear this? Oh, God. <laughs> I knew I was working with my brother, and I knew I was working with my child. Get away from me. You're pissing me off. Stop it. Hey, what do you think about uh, no chairs here? Just a little flesh. Eat your sandwich. Cookies. Have a cup of coffee. I mean, the, the problem is, how? We, what are we going to do with the weight? So he's he's saying maybe put an end end cap here in wood. I was thinking I need to make ten or twenty though. Why not? And then what? The, what are we going to do down there? Same thing. Here, just put it uh, all the way against the wall. Here, probably we put the uh, support, like a 2 by 4 or something. Okay. You know, then we go... Use a bracket, use a bracket almost. 16, 16 inches. The total, you know, the piece, you know. 
16 inches out. Mm -hmm. So you were thinking 14. Yeah. 13? 13. Yeah, 13 wide. And then we'll go all the way to that corner, right? Because yeah. we got to pick up that weight somewhere. And then I got to get Kevin over here to see what Kevin thinks we can do. As far as support, what, what can we, we, we have to pick up the weight somehow. We can't just put a, it, I mean, we can't just put a metal bracket here and a metal bracket there. That's not going to carry that weight. One support in the, in, the, in the wall and the other one right there in the... Yeah, but wood. I'm talking wood. Yeah. Instead of just metal. You know, originally I was talking about doing like just an, a couple of L brackets. That's not going to cover that weight though. It won't pick up the weight. Too much weight. Somebody leans on it and the thing pulls out of the wall. Well, you need to go to see in uh, Home Depot. They sell in a strong... Uh, the metal, uh, strong... Uh, how do you call it? Ninja For granite? Stuff? Yeah. Supports? Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll go look. I mean, I, I think Kevin can do it easily. I'll go find those supports if at Home Depot now. Yeah, see if what he's available. Find. I mean, yeah, if he's available. I'll make them available. Mm. I don't want There's a whole bunch right here. I don't want them. The next day. What's up, buddy? Hey, how you doing? Good, man. How are you? We actually have our 2020 pamphlets. So this is just kind of what we have new. What's going on? So um, our new image medallions. Just a good thing. Those are the ones we've set in the, the, uh, the lid? Yeah, so you can do the corner or the cap panel. Oh, okay. Version of it. Uh, also, I don't know if you knew our corner or our medallions and the symbol corners are now interchangeable. So if you want a, because these used to be just corners, now you can mm -hmm. put them in the cap panel and these can go. They're magnetic now, right? They used to be the mm -hmm. little hook. They come with an adapter. You can get it that way. Yeah. Okay. And then our keepsake medallions, um, you can get like the image as well on there. And then if they have like a signature or handwriting, mm -hmm. we can get that engraved on the back. Oh, nice. So these are the medallions, the same for the caskets, they work for the urns as well? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, feel free to take a look. And I think I, did I drop off military? Yeah, I yeah, I got those on my desk. Okay. Those are sharp. Um, oh, nice. Cool. What else is going on? How's our friend Michelle? She's doing well. Yeah. Uh, she'll be back. So this is my second to last week. So yeah, next week's my last week, and then and you're she's back to your your normal route. And... Uh, there's a uh, territory open in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Ah. so I'll be uh, moving there next. Okay. Well, I'm not sure what's gonna happen. Oh, okay. But... Well, that's exciting. Yeah. That's a good area. I mean, it, yeah. it's still pretty. Uh, it's a strong area, I would think. Yeah. Well, that's cool. It's a uh, very high cremation. But... Is it really? Yeah. That's shocking. Because yeah, I mean, like the Grand Rapids, Lansing, it's more oh, inner city. Yeah. Area. Okay. But yeah, when you get out, you know, it covers. Does it come down the south? That district come down the south a little bit along the lake or no? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's where my family is kind of originally from. Is kind of the Benton Harbor, um, Benton Harbor area. I'm still trying to get familiar with the area. I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, you're from. Indiana, right? We are from Batesville, actually. Yeah. yeah. And what was the connection we had? We had you. You said you knew someone. So my recently. cousin uh, married Dennis yeah, Warren. That's what that's. Oh yeah, from hot. Yeah. Yeah. Then yeah. Got, it, got it. Got it. Yeah. I knew there was something. So. Yeah. He's out. In, he lives in Plainfield. Mm -hmm. you know, so. Cool. Well, thanks for stopping in. Yeah. Um, Appreciate the time. Absolutely. I think we had at least one. Didn't they have one unit when you were? I think uh, I had a unit not too long ago from you guys. Yeah, I... I you don't I get the memo on that? No, it all goes to Michelle. Oh, uh, okay. Like all right. Well, anyways. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, appreciate it. Yeah, we'll keep using it. We, we use the uh, the Meaningful Selection series, and okay. we're going to make it look great. We love it, so... Awesome. All right. Yeah. Best of luck to you. Thanks, Jake. All the best. Take care. Yeah, Thanks, Jake. Bye-bye. So IFDA just sent another email talking about, I guess, what to do um, regarding the COVID-19. 
And this is regarding mass gatherings of all events for 10 plus people should be canceled or held virtually. What it says okay. in black and white. So that, I guess, raises a question for what we're going to do for the service on Saturday. You know, the family wants to have a private, immediate family service on Saturday. What if we did, if we, we stag, staggered the times and allowed 10 people from 9 to 11 or 9 to 10, 9 and 9.30, and then another 10 people from 9.30 to 10, and we just rotated them out? Yeah, I mean, that's what they're calling for. I mean, how do you, how do you go and do something completely different and risk everything else? What about maybe reaching out to other funeral homes and kind of all coming together here and trying to figure all this out, what we're all going to do? I mean, people are going to continue to die, and right. we're going to need to, we all need to stick together, I guess, you know? I mean, I think that would be the best way to figure out what everybody else is going to do. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, I don't. I mean, I don't have a. I don't have an answer for it. I mean, I, I really. This, this is crazy. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. So. All right. Well, I'm gonna call the family and walk walk through what we could. What are the options? So, we'll take it from that. So I'm putting together kind of a checklist of items that I believe. Um, the funeral home needs to consider given the circumstances and guidelines that are being put in place by those uh, CDC. So first they're talking about virtual arrangements. We already have the capabilities of doing that. It's a no-brainer. Uh, live broadcast and visitations. Um, so if, if a family wants to continue the path of having a full visitation open to the public, we have the capabilities of broadcasting live via our Facebook page. Um, we also are running into the scenario where I'm working with their family. Yeah. They have immediate family come in on Saturday, 10 people at a time, um, to pay their respects to their father and their grandfather, um, and then doing the burial to follow. So I believe that families are put in such a difficult position to make a decision. We need to incentivize them and understand that we feel their pain and understand that they need to have closure still so that moving forward any cases or families that were call for our service that still want to choose the, the traditional burial route that we offer to them our embalming casketing they get purchase a casket um, we allow for immediate family only to come in and do a viewing meaning uh, identification, understanding that this is the person that's passed. Um, those will be a segmented period of time given the guidelines from the CDC. And then continue with the burial. Take it a step further. Following the lifting of the guidelines, following the end of this virus, Vanner Funeral Home offers to the families that we service during that time a free memorial visitation at the funeral home to allow for the public to come in and pay the respects for that person that passed away. I, I don't know how I, I don't know any other way to get around the feeling that somebody's gonna have by not having people come and say, you know, I'm sorry that your mom or your dad passed away. I'm sorry that your husband or your spouse or your wife passed away. I mean, we're really putting on some some serious <laughs> it's putting a serious amount of stress on families already that are going through a stressful time with the passing of somebody. So how do we how do we alleviate a little bit of that uh, that that stress from them? And I think that if we have the capabilities of allowing for right. a space available for them following the end of this pandemic, uh, I think it's our responsibility to do that. I mean, I don't, I'm open to suggestions. I mean, the financial end of it is the financial end of it, right? I mean, it is the economics. Are not going to make sense for us however we still have a job to do we still have a duty to serve and if we have a building that's available I don't see why we're not going to be offering those services when we get the all clear 
we need to do something to curve the the uh, the uncertainty that people are having right on how we approach I, the service we would have to definitely if we were to do this we would have to you know it wouldn't be you know the family telling us oh I want to have it on July 5th I want you know it's gonna have to be us by going you know kind of a week in advance of when we're gonna be doing this because we're gonna have double the workload now but you know current day to pass services that you gonna throw all that in the mix here once the virus goes bye-bye just something to think about that the workload is gonna be double then I I'm okay with that I just you know again it's you kind of you talked about it earlier but serving a family and, and how they're feeling about losing a loved one and not having that closure, you know, we're definitely going to offer that to them by doing this, but... Yeah, because like in this particular circumstance, we have a World War II veteran, okay? Right. I mean, we're not able to fulfill the honor that that veteran deserves in a public setting. Right. And this might give an opportunity to the family. Not everybody would do that. <coughs> too. No, I, and that's that's probably tr that's probably true. But I'm just what I think is important is that they understand that that's a service that we're offering, right? That we're not just kind of closing the door, following the burial, you know. That we're understanding. And again, it, it you know it could be a it doesn't have to be a full service. It could just be a a two hour memorial service, and then they go to lunch. They can go... Yeah, because that's a whole other thing that we're not even thinking about, is right. that, like, the services that we're currently scheduling, they're not having any memorial luncheons, luncheons following their service because they're not allowed to. They're not allowed to have a gathering that has an opportunity to practice their faith. Right. So I have to assume that the Catholic Church is going to have to do something. You know, Vanderbilt Funeral. Mm -hmm. uh, well, actually, ma'am, the, the visitation is no longer uh, happening because of the situation surrounding around COVID-19. Um, there is a private family viewing scheduled, uh, but that information is being dispersed um, by the, the immediate family and themselves. Okay, you're welcome. Bye-bye. So, I'm comfortable telling families if they call for service that that's something that we're going to do. And that's something I believe the Catholic churches are going to allow following post-mortem, following somebody being buried, opening up the church to allow for a memorial mass. So we could, we could say, hey, we'll, we'll throw in a two-hour, you know, not throw in, but we'll, we'll conduct a two-hour uh, public visitation before your funeral mass. Or if you want to do it the night before, we'll do that too. I mean, I, we'll, the, the point of it is, is that people still need to have public people from the public that want to pay their respects right. case in point what just happened on the phone here right so we have the we have the ability to do that I, and I, I think it's our obligation to do it so i think that's something that you, if you get calls let them know that's what we're looking and doing and that you know nothing is formally structured yet however um we've spoken to the owners and obviously management and that's something that we're going to implement I had the funeral today. I, uh, I feel like I'm the only one working. Mm, 
have we have anything going on. We only have the service to set up for for tomorrow. My little brother's hurt. He hurt his back, so he's you know the end of the world is happening. Today. Apparently, the governor of the state of Illinois set up a press conference at three o'clock, updating the residents of this fine state on the uh, on the issues that are surrounding COVID nineteen, and uh, it's got that's got a couple of us on edge. Um, there's been a lot of rumors floating around there about what could potentially happen next. Um, how does it impact the funeral business? I can tell you that the family we're working with for our our service tomorrow is calling every other hour trying to get updates. Are you having the service? Are we not having the service? I know that we're, you know, we're, we have to operate any guidelines that are set forth by the, by the state officials and um, CDC and federal government. So it's just kind of creating a little bit of an issue for us today. So, I don't know, we'll keep pushing through. Action. service if the family wants to still have a public visitation so there's nobody here the whole place is just no I, I invite immediate fam 10 family members immediate family only they come in pay the respects and then that's it and it's just a picture of the body for eight hours no I would, I would only do for like one I would only have like offer one hour visitations you know just make it a part of the thing so the other thing we talked about yesterday is that, so like for instance, the people for Saturday. Yes. We're gonna do, starting at nine, we're gonna start the first 10 people to come in, mm -hmm. 30 minute increments, 10 people in, 10 people leave. The next 10 people can come in two minutes after that, after we wipe down everything, we'll wipe all the fucking, we'll wipe down all the, all the uh, handlebars and door handles and all their, all their nonsense. We'll do that for two hours. And then we're going to meet at the cemetery. But the cemetery just put out a, a press release. Of ten people only. Ten people only coming from the archdiocese. Right. So, and it's graveside. We already set it up for graveside. So this is going to be immediate family there. I offered to them already that you know, he's a World War II veteran. Yeah. It's a, it's a fairly large family, right? Uh -huh. um, that when this passes, we're going to offer a memorial service for them. At no additional charge. Okay, I understand. Around our own, I mean, we'll set it around our own convenience, our, our own convenience and guidelines. And so, it be, so there's no military honors there. No. And, and has that did that program no. cease? Uh, no, I haven't even addressed it. I just, I just assumed that, and I, as I explained to him, I said that's kind of a public scenario. You want that to be a public ceremony. You want that presentation to be public. 
Yeah, but I mean, uh, folding the flag in pres presentation, uh, you know, doing presentation, that's not, that could still, that could still happen at any time. Right? I understand that, but why would I do that for a gravesite service for 10 people when there's 50 people in the family? I, I so that's why I what think I'm saying having is a if memorial. You're, if you're gonna do a memorial service at a later date that's open to the public, then you can arrange at that's, that point in time? Yes, that's why I'm suggesting it. Okay. Okay. The next day. All right, so there's literally a first time for everything. I have never had to take my temperature before entering a nursing facility to uh, to pick up a a, a, a decedent. This is uh, this whole viral scare is is it's really causing a lot of havoc. And uh, you know, I understand the I understand what the facilities are trying to do. They're trying to protect their patients and their staff. But really, it's it's uh, man. Besides the inconvenience factor of it, which is, you know, not the end of the world, it's just, it's, I don't know. I, I don't feel comfortable putting my mouth on the thermometer that multiple people are doing, you know, but what are my options? Not, not to pick up the individual, you know, they don't have the, they don't have the equipment to use an infrared uh, thermometer. It's just, and then having to, go around the back and have to go around some side door and it just uh man i was wondering if this is getting carry away a little too much here so much uncertainty hopefully it reels in and we all go about our business once again Stretcher, transportation cot has two seatbelt like straps. We also brought some uh, sanitation uh, products with us today. It's being recommended to do so through the funeral industry. So this is the part that I was telling you is a little bit different than normal. Uh, this cloth here is considered what we call wibral. It's a special, a special type of material that we use to um, help with disinfectant. And this is a disc spray made by Dodge, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's a disinfectant spray uh, made specifically for the funeral industry. And it's highly effective in killing a lot of the 
germs and bacteria that may or may not be a situation that we run into. Um, so what they're recommending is that we cover the orifice, also known as the mouth in this particular scenario. Uh, the reason we do that is because when somebody passes away, they still have air in their lungs. And um, when you move somebody, the lungs may expel the air that's left inside, uh, causing there to be droplets and uh, potentially virus, flu virus, or uh, you know, any other type of bacteria or, or flu into the air. Hence the reason why we're wearing our respirator masks, the gloves, but also the disc spray, and it, 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 it would be to stop that. So we're just taking some precautions, that's all.
Okay, so we're back in the car. Uh, we have the individual in our care. Um, shockingly, I was surprised. Well, first of all, the, the professional staff at the nursing facility um, is exactly that. They're very professional. And, uh, they're going about their day as though it's any other day. So that's, that's promising. Um, you know, in this particular circumstance, it's kind of tough to see the residents of the facility that are inside and, and knowing that their loved ones aren't able to come inside to view or to visit with them and uh, they're, they're depressed and down and that's horrible it's a horrible situation and uh, you know, the, the vulnerability of the senior community particularly in this viral uh, season with this COVID-19 flu season for that too uh, it's tough tough situation. It's tough to keep facilities clean uh, to the standards to keep, you know, keep those viruses out. Um, as I mentioned earlier, lucky for us is that we treat we treat it as though it, we, that we know that there is viruses and you know we got to safeguard ourselves and our staff and our families from those potential uh, those potential health care is issues. So you know we treat we treat the situation as though it's something that we need to protect ourselves from and that's just the way we do business and it's the way that most of us um, want to conduct business do it to a high level of service high level of quality and uh, we're gonna be on our way home There you have it. I hope that you enjoyed the first ever reality series television show shot here at Vandenberg Funeral Home. Um, Jacob Vandenberg, host of Undertaker 365. Um, well, I hope you're excited about what you just saw. You're going to see a lot more of that coming out here every Thursday. Um, we're going to be posting at 2 o'clock. It's going to be reality series. It's going to be the interview series. We're just going to keep, keep inundating you with more information regarding the funeral industry. Um, the wacky and wonderful world of the Vandenberg family here at Vandenberg Funeral Home. Um, so if you like what you see, please don't hesitate to like and follow our page. Follow us on our website, undertaker365.com, hashtag undertaker365. You can find us all over the internet. Um, 
it is my goal and our goal to continue to flood you with funeral in information and industry news. Um, as you can see, we got branded material now. Uh, our microphone systems are branded. Um, we're working with our friends at Disrupt Media. Um, so they're helping us with Facebooking and getting all this information out there. So big shout out to them. And then uh, to close this first reality series and encompassing how we've been shooting this, uh, this, this first episode underneath the guidelines of the CDC and all this craziness that's going on throughout our globe, this episode will be sponsored by our friend, Hand Sanitizer. Um, I can tell you that we use this religiously. Um, the entire family does, and this is just a small little helping of what we have here um, at Undertaker 365. Keeping, our, uh, keeping us and our families healthy and safe is number one priority. Because um, if we're not, we can't bring the show to you. So uh, look forward to seeing you at the next episode. We'll talk to you then.